Welcome to Electra Online, and here we're going to talk about vapor pressure and partial pressure as it applies to the amount of pressure that the water vapor can have in the atmosphere. So going back to this graph that we've seen before, here it depicts the uh, pressure of the vapor that will be a result of the temperature. For example, at zero degrees centigrade, vapor pressure can only be 0 0.006 atmospheres which is a little, like a little bit over four millimeters of mercury. And as the temperature increases, the vapor pressure can increase. So whenever water is at a higher and higher temperature, the rate of evaporation will increase. And if you put that into an enclosed container, the vapor pressure will build up to that maximum pressure that can exist at that level, because at that temperature, I should say, because at that point, we'll reach a dynamic equilibrium where the rate of evaporation will equalize the rate of condensation. And so that will be the pressure that will then be maintained for the water vapor above the water. But what happens when this water container is in exposed to the atmosphere? because there's atmospheric pressure there, there's lots of gas, nit nitrogen gas, oxygen gas. What happens to the water vapor when it evaporates? Well, it actually begins to displace the molecules in the air, the air molecules, and it becomes part of the atmosphere. And it turns out the amount of the water molecules that can exist in a vapor phase in the atmosphere depends on the atmosphere's temperature. So it turns out that the amount of vapor pressure, the partial pressure of the total atmospheric pressure, is equal to the vapor pressure that would exist if you were to place a container in an enclosed environment and allow it to evaporate until, equi until dynamic equilibrium is, is obtained. So that vapor pressure doesn't change whether or not you have the water in a container that is completely evacuated with air and only vapor exists in a container or you're in an atmospheric condition where you have everything is open to the atmosphere. And so again, that, equi that dynamic equilibrium remains regardless of whether or not you're in a container that has nothing but water vapor in it or you're exposed to the atmosphere. What that means is that the amount of vapor pressure in the atmosphere at zero degrees centigrade can be 4.58 millimeters of mercury, which accounts to almost a little bit over six tenths of a percent of atmospheric pressure. At 10 degrees, it can be nine millimeters of mercury, which is 1.2% of atmospheric pressure at 20 degrees, it's now up to 2.3% and so forth. So you can see that the amount of vapor pressure that can exist in the atmosphere increases with atmospheric temperature. That doesn't mean that when it's 20 degrees outside that the air contains 17.54 millimeters of mercury of partial pressure, or I should say of, you know, well, partial pressure of water vapor. It means that it can be up to that amount. So what that means is if the amount of vapor pressure in the atmosphere at 20 degrees centigrade is less than this, less than 2.3% of the total atmospheric pressure, then water can continue to evaporate and the rate of evaporation will be larger than the rate of condensation, bringing more and more moisture into the air. As soon as the vapor pressure reaches 2.3% of the atmospheric pressure or 17.5 millimeters of mercury, then the rate of evaporation will equal the rate of condensation and no additional water vapor will go into the atmosphere. You will actually have reached the, um, the maximum vapor pressure that the atmosphere can hold at that temperature and then you can say that the atmosphere is fully saturated with the water vapor and you can't have any more in there. If then the temperature increases, now you can see that the, vape, the partial pressure or the vapor pressure of water vapor in the atmosphere can be higher. And so therefore then the rate of evaporation will increase and the rate of evaporation will exceed the rate of condensation until the, the air becomes fully saturated again. And now 4.2% of the atmospheric pressure is due to the vapor pressure of, of, um, of, due to the vapor pressure of the vapor in the atmosphere. Now I try to kind of depict that here. See at zero degrees centigrade, the total vapor pressure in the atmosphere cannot exceed 0.6%. If there's 0.6% vapor pressure in the atmosphere, it is fully saturated at this temperature and no more evaporation will take place. Well, evaporation will take place, but the condensation will happen at the same rate and no additional water vapor will end up into the atmosphere. If the temperature increases to 20 degrees centigrade, then the evaporation rate can increase the condensation will increase, but it'll become an equilibrium point by the time the, the pressure is 2.3% of atmospheric pressure. And you can see at higher and higher atmospheric pressures, the amount of vapor you can have in the atmosphere increases as a percentage of total atmospheric pressure. And by the time the temperature reaches 100 degrees centigrade, the water can continue to evaporate until 100% of the atmosphere 
or atmospheric pressure is due to the water vapor, and of course there will be none due to the other molecules in the atmosphere. That will, of course, never really happen in real life. Uh, but what that means, though, is that at 100 degrees centigrade, water will just continue to evaporate, evaporate, and evaporate, and will always exceed the condensation rate so that water will continue to boil away and evaporate until all the water has turned into vapor because there's nothing in the atmosphere to stop it. The atmosphere can completely fill with water vapor. So hopefully that gives you a good idea with the with the concept of the vapor pressure can also become the partial pressure of the vapor in the atmosphere. And yes, it does depend on atmospheric temperature, and as the temperature reaches 100 degrees centigrade, 100% of the pressure can be water vapor, which of course it never is, but it can get up to that amount. And as the temperature decreases, you can see that less and less pressure of the atmosphere can be due to the water vapor, so more will condense out, less will evaporate until we again reach that equilibrium. So, if for some reason it's 20 degrees centigrade and the air is fully saturated and then the air cools down to zero degrees centigrade, a lot will condense out until it only contains 0.6% pressure of water vapor rather than the 2.3% at 20 degrees centigrade. So that's the difference between vapor pressure and partial pressure in the atmosphere.